Are you feeling constantly tired, foggy headed, or just low on energy, even after a full night's sleep? Sometimes it's easy to put this down to stress or aging, but the real culprit could actually be a surprisingly common deficiency, and that is vitamin B12. Hi, I'm Sonia Hollis, a qualified nutritional therapist, and today we're going to be talking about why vitamin B12 deficiency is more common than what most people think, and what you can do to naturally boost your levels, improve your energy, and feel more like yourself again. I'll break down the key roles B12 plays in your body, especially for your brain, blood, and energy. We'll look at common symptoms, what puts you at risk, and how to test your levels properly. And lastly, I'll share some practical ways to get enough B12 through food and with supplementation. But before we dive in, just hit that subscribe button to turn on notifications so you never miss any more of the science backed tips. So let's get started. Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, is a water soluble vitamin that your body absolutely relies upon and it can't make it on its own. You have to get it from food or supplements. Now, it plays three essential roles. Red blood cell formation. So without enough B12, you can develop anemia, which leads to fatigue and weakness. Nervous system protection. So B12 maintains a myelin sheath, the insulin around your nerves. A deficiency can cause tingling, numbness, poor memory, and even nerve damage and energy production. It helps your mitochondria, the powerhouses of your cells, turn food into usable energy. So in short, B12 helps your brain to think clearly, your body to feel energized, and your nervous system to stay sharp. But here's something fascinating. Once B12 gets inside your cells, your body processes it like a multi-purpose tool, sending it to where it's most needed. One form goes to support the production of methionine, a building block for brain chemicals, DNA, and mood regulating pathways. Another form is inside your mitochondria to support your metabolism and energy production. If your B12 is too low, those systems start to slow down, and that's when we often see elevated levels of homocysteine or MMA on a blood test, your body's way of waving a red flag that B12 isn't getting where it needs to go. So how do you know if you're low? Here are some of the most common vitamin B12 deficiency symptoms. Persistent fatigue or weakness, brain fog, memory issues, or just poor concentration, tingling or numbness in your hands or feet, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, pale skin and even signs of anemia, mood changes or symptoms of depression, and in more severe cases, even balance problems or nerve damage. One of the reasons B12 deficiency often goes unnoticed is that symptoms can creep in slowly and mimic other conditions. And many people don't realize that they're deficient until they experience more obvious neurological signs. Because the body stores about one to five milligram of vitamin B12, or about 1,000 to 2,000 times as much as the amount typically consumed in a day, the symptoms of vitamin B12 can take several years to appear. You might be thinking, well, I eat well, so how can I be deficient? Well, here's the catch. Even if your diet includes B12, you might still not absorb it properly. So here are the main causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. Low stomach acid. As we age, stomach acid levels naturally drop. But stomach acid is essential to release B12 from food so that it can be absorbed. And if you take antacids or acid blocking meds like PPIs, this is even more likely. Pernicious anemia. An autoimmune condition where your body doesn't produce enough intrinsic factor which is needed to absorb B12. 
and gut issues. So conditions like celiac disease, Crohn's or a history of GI surgery, including weight loss surgery, can interfere with absorption. And lastly, medications. There are certain medications that can also deplete B12, including metformin, a commonly prescribed drug for blood sugar control. Scientists are still working out the exact mechanisms, but here is what we know. Metformin seems to block the absorption of B12 intrinsic factor complex in the small intestine, specifically at the part called the ileum. Now this process normally depends on calcium and metformin may disrupt that. It may also slow down gut motility, which can lead to bacterial overgrowth. And these bacteria can steal your B12 before your body gets a chance to absorb it. Other possible mechanisms include reduced bile acid recycling and even less B12 being released properly in the stomach due to the changes in the intrinsic factor production. But what's interesting though, is that the calcium supplementation has been shown to potentially reverse the effect, which suggests that calcium connection is especially important. So if you've been on metformin for a while, it's a good idea to get your vitamin B12 levels checked regularly, especially if you've noticed symptoms of fatigue, numbness or brain fog. And lastly, plant-based diets. B12 is naturally found only in animal products. So vegetarians and vegans are at a higher risk unless they're supplementing or using fortified foods. So if you are more plant-based or on any of these medications, it's worth paying close attention. A simple blood test can check your serum B12 levels, but here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Most people check B12 status with a total serum B12 blood test, and that is a good starting point. So above 250 picomoles per litre is considered normal. 150 to 249 picomoles per litre is borderline, and below 150 picomoles per litre is considered deficient. But here's the catch. This test shows total B12 in your bloodstream, and around 80% of that is bound to a protein called haptocorin, which your body can't actually use. So your B12 could look normal on paper, but still below where it matters, and that's inside your cells. So that's why practitioners often look at two other markers. Homocysteine. Now this chemical builds up when your body can't recycle it properly, and it's a process that depends on vitamin B12 and folate. So if B12 is low, homocysteine rises. So the normal range is between five to 15 micromoles per liter, but some may consider over 13 to be high. Now we also need to note that high homocysteine doesn't always mean low B12. It could also be from low folate or kidney issues. So it's not the most specific test on its own. Now also looking at MMA. Now this is a more specific marker of B12 deficiency. When B12 is low, MMA levels rise because mitochondria can't use B12 to process certain fats and amino acids. The normal range is below 260 to 350 nanomoles per litre, depending on the lab. But again, MMA can rise with kidney problems, so it's best used alongside other tests. So really what I'm trying to say is that if your B12 test is borderline, a practitioner might also check your MMA and homocysteine levels to get a clearer picture of what's going on inside your cells not just in your blood. And if you're a visual learner, I've added a diagram here, but don't worry, all you need to know is that with these markers, homocysteine and MMA, they can give you a better clue to what's really happening within your B12 levels inside your body. And if your B12 levels are borderline or low, then please just speak to your GP or healthcare provider about further testing. So let's just talk about where you actually can get B12 from and where you don't. 
Now the top B12 rich food comes from animal sources and they include beef liver, one of the most concentrated natural sources of B12, clams and oysters, these are rich in B12 and also minerals like zinc, fatty fish like salmon and tuna, eggs and dairy products such as milk, yogurt and cheese. If you include these in your diet regularly, you're more likely to be meeting your B12 needs naturally. Now, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, it's especially important to seek out fortified foods, such as fortified nutritional yeast. Now, always check the label and to confirm that it does include B12. Fortified plant milks like almond, oat or soy. Dairy, if you consume it and seaweed. Now early studies suggest that some types may contain usable forms of B12, although amounts can vary. Okay, and here's an important myth to bust. You may have heard that spirulina, mushrooms or chickpeas contain vitamin B12, but they don't contain the kind that your body can actually use. Now these plant-based foods contain a compound called pseudovitamin B12 and it looks similar to the real B12 but your body can't absorb it or use it properly. Now this diagram shows how marine bacteria produce pseudo B12 but only certain algae can convert it into a usable form. Humans don't have that ability which is why these sources can be misleading. So here you can see how the real vitamin B12 and the pseudo-vitamin B12 look chemically similar, but the difference in their base structure makes a huge impact. So the usable forms fit into our enzymes like a key in a lock. But pseudo-vitamin B12, it's the wrong shape. Our bodies just can't use it. So if you're plant-based, it's important to rely on fortified foods or high quality supplements, not on foods that look like they contain B12. So sometimes food alone isn't enough, especially if your body struggles to absorb B12 properly. And that's where supplements can make a real difference. Now there are four main types of B12 and each have slightly different properties. This is an active form used by your nervous system and it's great for supporting brain function, mood and methylation. This is a synthetic form found in many basic multivitamins. It's cost effective but needs to be converted in the body. And this is a natural form often used in injections and in medical settings. It stays in the bloodstream longer and converts well to active forms. And this is the other active form primarily used by your mitochondria for energy production. So for most people, the methylcobalamin or the hydroxycobalamin are excellent choices, especially if you're supporting nervous system health, fatigue or brain health. The official daily requirement is just 2.4 micrograms, but due to absorption limitations, Higher supplement doses are often needed to meet your body's needs, especially as we age or are plant-based or have digestive issues. Evidence has shown that ideally we need five to 100 micrograms daily for maintenance, 250 to 500 micrograms for mild absorption concerns or plant-based diets, or 2000 micrograms weekly, either in one go or split into two 1,000 microgram dosages has been shown to be just as effective as daily low dose supplementation, even those with mild deficiency. Clinical trials have found no significant difference in B12 status between those taking 50 micrograms daily and those taking 2,000 micrograms weekly. So that means that you can take less more often or more less often and still benefit as long as you're consistent. But here's something important. Taking a massive dose doesn't mean that your body will absorb more. Your gut uses two main absorption pathways. One that's receptor based, intrinsic factor dependent and maxes out at around 1.5 to 2 micrograms per dose. 
and one that's passive diffusion, which absorbs about one to 2% of large doses. So that means from a 500 microgram tablet, your body may only absorb only five to 10 micrograms. From a 1,000 microgram tablet, maybe 10 to 20 micrograms are absorbed. So higher doses aren't dangerous, but they're not automatically more effective either. The key is choosing a dose that suits your needs and taking it consistently. There is no recommended upper tolerable limit for vitamin B12 intake because it is a water soluble vitamin, meaning that part of it is excreted in urine. So what's the best format? If absorption is an issue due to age, gut health or medications like metformin or PPIs, then you need to consider different options. So sublingual tablets or sprays. These dissolve under the tongue and bypass digestion, which may help to improve absorption. Lozenges or liquid drops, another good option for direct uptake. Or injections, which are usually reserved for more severe or clinically confirmed deficiencies and also administered under supervision. Some people also benefit for a combination B complex formulation, especially if they also need folate or B6 support. So you need to choose a form that suits your body needs and not just the highest number on the label. Consistency matters more than massive doses. So let's bust a quick myth. You've probably seen B12 promoted for weight loss or as an energy booster. The truth is, if you're deficient, correcting your B12 levels can improve metabolism and energy. So yes, you might find it easier to stay active and feel less fatigued. But B12 itself won't cause weight loss unless deficiency was holding you back in the first place. It's not a fat burner, but is crucial for supporting the systems that help your body work effectively. So to recap, B12 is essential for your brain, blood and energy. Deficiency is common, especially if you're over 50 or on a plant-based diet or on certain medications. Testing is simple and symptoms like fatigue, tingling or brain fog should never be ignored. You can get B12 from food, fortified products or smart supplementation tailored to your needs. I've included in the description below a handout for quick reference which you can download. So if you've experienced low B12 before or have any questions about symptoms, just drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching these videos and remember to give it a like and share as this really helps our channel. And also remember to hit that subscribe button for more science-backed nutrition tips. That's it. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.